Hello YouTube. Okay, this is my response video of Sensei Rick's um, honesty of what started me in not only the martial arts but also the survival mindset and I'll go from there. Quite honestly, I was born into war. I didn't have a choice. It wasn't, gee, I made a decision that I'm going to practice the martial arts. I didn't have that option. I didn't have any option. I was born into into violence. Um, Violence was everywhere around me. It was outside my home. It was inside my home. It was everywhere. Um, this is not a boohoo thing, but it's fact. I learned later on that uh, size and violence makes up for a lot. Okay. Um, so I learned. I had to learn how to deal with that. Um, and it instilled this drive and this fire inside me uh, to defend my family and those I love. Because um, I knew that if I didn't do it, nobody else would. And I knew that there would be a time when I would be big and strong. So I would have the ability to do that. So, as I was young, I uh, got into the martial arts as, as best as I could. Um, quite honestly, what I ended up doing and my mom ended up doing is uh, cleaning a judo school and learning judo and jiu-jitsu uh, at a very reduced rate because we cleaned the school. Um, that also gave me an excuse to pretty much be on the mat every waking minute and that's what I did for most of my adolescence and, and later childhood, later childhood to adolescence, that's what I did, I was on the mat. Um, as I got older, um, then I went into the military, and I honed my skills from there. Um, I had already, had, by the time I joined the military, I already had eight years of judo and five years of jujitsu, and for the last five years of, well, pretty much for all through my, my high school years, I did both arts. I studied both arts, both Tori Ru Jiu Jitsu and Judo. Um, my instructor has black belt from the Dakota Con, and when he came back to the States, um, that's when he progressed in his rank, and I believe he's a sixth Don now. Um, but either way, um, that's where that's where I got my training. Um, when I was in the military, Honestly, a lot of it was had was ad hoc. A lot of it was, um, a lot of my instructors were guys that were serving right alongside of me, and they had other skills and other talents. Um, a couple of them had hockey, jiu jitsu. Uh, a couple of them had uh, kung fu, various styles. Uh, one had dim mock, and so I tried to learn as much as I could from them, um, and that's where a lot of it took off from there. I'm not going to exactly go into names with the people that I served with and the people that I trained with because quite honestly, one, it's of no importance to YouTube and two, I respect my, my instructors and my senseis uh, and the people that I trained with to the point it's not important, okay? Um, and I'm going to leave that as that. So, um, that's where I went with that, um, and I pretty much have been doing self-study for quite a while, pretty much ever since. Um, the reason why I wanted to branch out in the military is because Judo and Jiu Jitsu, although it's a nice soft style and it works and it's grappling oriented and all that, the problem that you run into is if you've got a very skilled striker, you have to have something uh, to be able to um, at least slow him down enough to where you can grab a hold of him and take him down. Um, or if you've got, if you're up against a grappler who's more experienced in grappling than you are, you need to have that striking capability to basically use your grappling in reverse to keep yourself from being taken down and use your striking ability. If you don't have a striking ability, you're in trouble. Okay. Um, the other great thing about striking arts is they do prepare you for weapons and for knives, because um, you're used to dancing around and 
I'm using the term dancing lightly here, but you're used to moving in and out and using angles. And uh, that's very common in knife fighting and weapons fighting and whatever you, or heck, even just the sam standard ghetto slam, you know, get out of the way of them being able to hit you and then you hit them. Um, that's pretty much how that how that boils down. So that's what I started with uh, martial arts for, is to be able to defend myself and my family. It wasn't for a beauty contest, it wasn't for um, tournaments and accolades and, and participation trophies and all that other crap. I couldn't have cared. I wanted to be able to, de to defend my family. And if somebody wanted to go to the ultimate level, I wanted to be able to go there just as quickly as I could so that I could make sure that my family survived that day, even if I didn't. That's what it was designed for. I don't really particularly care about the way my body looks. I really don't. Um, if I am going to use it, <coughs> I'm going to use it to my advantage. Um, because yeah, I'm fat. Okay, so I'm I'm a fatter guy. Okay, fine. If I can use that to my advantage, though, okay, think about what it does give me. It gives me added weight. It gives me a little bit of padding. Ha ha. But what it also does is it makes people not think. They they stereotype what I can do because of my weight. That's and that stereotype may or may not be true most people don't understand that. If I already have my opponent thinking a certain way with the stereotype and I'm able to show him something else, that changes the whole fight and now he's got to mess that around in his head and be like, okay, this guy's actually a little bit quicker than I thought he would be or maybe he's slower or maybe he's stronger or maybe he's this and maybe he's that and I didn't see that coming. Okay. Um, standard deception. I mean, quite honestly, a lot of a lot of fighting and a lot of defense is based in deception. You you get into that um, more and more as you start studying, um, like Aki Jiu Jitsu and and Aikido and and other forms. Um, it's very prevalent, of, of course, in Ninja Jitsu. Um, they think I'm here, so because they think I'm here, they're going to attack over here when all of a sudden I attack from over here and they don't understand why why I was able to get over there. Something else um, about my training is in the past I don't know, five, five years or so, I have been um, doing a lot of research like I always did before, but even more so, especially with YouTube now. Um, and now that we actually have a martial arts community and have had for like five years or so, um, I've been studying a lot of uh, martial arts over YouTube. Which leads me into my next point. And the reason why I started um, putting videos out and posting videos out um, with YouTube is quite honestly, I've gotten to the point where I feel it's important for me to start to give back. Um, I feel, and I've been kind of in this uh, community for the past five years or so. Um, I, for the longest time, I was just a standby uh, guy that stood in the wings and and threw out a couple of really cool comments every once in a while. Ideas that I had, um, particularly on uh, Sensei Rick's channel, um, I would throw out all kinds of comments, and I think I did that for like a couple of years and uh, never really throw anything, any of my videos out, just put out a comment. And I really didn't have a calling to. Um, and then I started believing and I started seeing um, the economy be the way it is. And I honestly, wholeheartedly believe that there will be an economic collapse. There you have it. That's why I put out the videos that I do. Um, because of that, uh, with an economic collapse, yeah, there's resources down there at Walmart, but what happens when all the resources are gone? What are you going to do then? Um, 
then you're going to be thinking about a survival situation and you will be thrown into a survival situation and you'll have to know how to deal with that um, and I mean all aspects of it because at that point there will be no calling the police department and say hey somebody's breaking into my car um, there isn't going to be a police department there isn't going to be a rule of law so at that point you're going to have to handle that any way you can or you're going to be or you are going to be handled okay so instantly uh, there, there's there's a whole bunch of uh, things that are going to happen at that point that we haven't really dealt with as a society as specifically in America um, and you know unless you lived in the total ghetto somewhere we really haven't dealt with that uh, as a society uh, on a large scale and that's going to happen um, with Katrina look what happened there I mean overnight you had people that were law abiding citizens turn around and be like hey I'm going to loot some stuff you know um, and okay we would understand food we would understand groceries but, you know, when you got people breaking into stores just so that they can have a TV when there's no electricity. Need I say more? Um, if you can't defend your family when this happens, your family will be taken from you. Or worse. And uh, I can only imagine that if you're a woman it would be a very 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 bad time for you because um, look at the third world countries it's you know and especially with this uh, human trafficking thing going on and just all this crazy stuff um, you're gonna have to be able to deal with this um, you know if you're dropped off in the woods do you know how to survive not just two days not just three days I mean can you live there can you live out in the bush you know for six months ten months a year three years five years ten years fifteen years can you do that if you can't now would be the time to do the research because <laughs> if the switch for the internet goes off which is gonna happen when economic collapse happens why would the you know why would you continue to have electricity and let alone internet if there's no money to pay for it you know so instantly communications I don't foresee to be continuing um, at that point I mean if you had done the research now you would be better off so that's something else to be thinking about Okay, so that does it for this video. Um, I'm going to be going into a little bit more into my uh, anti-bullying video. Um, I'm going to be going over why we are the way we are as martial arts and why this martial arts community um, is a little bit different than most communities out there and um, why the martial arts community should be different. Um, I appreciate your comments. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your time. Defend your homes wisely.